Frederick Pohl's 1977 sci-fi classic Gateway is set in a future that feels familiar and yet utterly alien. Humanity discovers a huge abandoned space station built by a vanished alien species known as the Hichi, and the station, which comes to be called Gateway, contains nearly a thousand small spacecraft, each pre-programmed for destinations nobody understands. The kicker is that these trips appear to be totally random. Some might end up taking its passengers to star systems with resources or alien technology that has the potential to revolutionize life on Earth, leading to untold riches. Others might end in fiery death in a star's corona, or worse, a slow, painful death by starvation stranded in deep space. The only way to find out is to climb in, strap down, and take off. And it's here we find the book's protagonist, Robinette Broadhead, or just simply Bob, a man who wins the lottery and uses his modest winnings to buy a one-way ticket to Gateway, where he hopes to become one of the lucky few who strike it really rich on a Hichi ship. And here's where Pohl shows his genius. Gateway isn't really a book about space adventures. Sure, there are dangerous missions and alien artifacts and cosmic mysteries, but they aren't the point at all. This is a novel that's really about regret and trauma and the aching weight of what could have been. As Bob tells his story, we bounce between two timelines, one with him in therapy years after his time on Gateway and the other in real time telling the story of his days on the station. The therapy scenes are where the majority of the character work gets done, where Bob and his AI therapist, a program he names Siegfried von Schrink, navigate his emotional wreckage. What starts as Bob trying to process the loss of his lover, Clara, gradually spirals into an unearthing of his deepest fears and regrets, the missions he didn't take, the risks he ran from, and the people he left behind. We do ultimately learn that Bob did get rich on Gateway, but his success came at a cost he never fully understood until it was far too late. With this book, Pohl's brilliance lies in how he forces us to confront uncomfortable truths about human nature, and he uses the tropes of sci-fi as tools for psychological excavation. One of the novel's central themes is the randomness of existence. Just like life itself, every mission out of Gateway is a lottery. The pilots have zero control over their fate. They step into a ship, pray it doesn't crash into the core of a planet or the event horizon of a black hole, and they hope it returns them back home as heroes. Bob's paralysis, his endless deliberation over whether to take a flight, perfectly mirrors the way we hesitate in our own lives, fearful of making the wrong choices, but knowing that not choosing is itself a choice. This sense of randomness isn't just narrative flair, it's the marrow of the book. Bob's fear isn't just about dying in space, but about living with regret. The decisions we make or don't make haunt us just as profoundly as anything the universe can throw at us. That's what makes Gateway more than just a space adventure. It's a deep meditation on the roads not taken. There's also a layer of economic commentary simmering beneath the surface. Gateway's missions are a microcosm of late capitalism. The poor and desperate flock to Gateway, lured by the promise of immense wealth, but most return empty-handed if they return at all. Those who do succeed, like Bob, often find the price of that success far steeper than they'd ever expected. There's a sick irony here. Just as in our world, the line between salvation and ruin is razor thin, and luck, not skill, often determines which side you fall on. 
Hull was not your typical science fiction writer. In his day, he rubbed elbows with Isaac Asimov and C.M. Kornbluth, but Hull was always a bit of a trickster in the genre. Where others leaned toward optimistic futures filled with sleek technology and noble space explorers, Hull dug into the messiness of human motivations, greed, fear, desire, regret. It's not that he was excessively cynical, it's that he understood people far too well to sugarcoat these concepts. Part of what makes Gateway so enduring is the fact that there's no neat resolution, no cosmic revelation that makes everything just click into place. Even the alien Hichi, who are really the mystery at the heart of the book, remain totally elusive. Hull's refusal to reveal their secrets is more than a plot device. It's a philosophical statement. Some things in life, whether alien technologies or even our own choices, will never fully make sense no matter how much we analyze them. This makes Gateway feel uncannily modern, despite being published in the late 70s. Hull's insights into mental health and trauma and economic exploitation could easily find their place in any contemporary novel. That's the magic of Pohl, and really of all great sci-fi writers. He's writing about the future, sure, but the future is just a mirror for the present. The ships on Gateway are a gamble, but so is life, and the trouble is that you can't buy your way out of regret no matter how many millions of dollars you have in the bank. What makes Gateway amazing is that it starts off feeling like a fun, speculative romp about alien tech and dangerous treasure hunts, but somewhere along the way, it morphs into something much deeper and much more personal. The book really isn't about space exploration at all. It's about emotional exploration. Every therapy session between Bob and Siegfried strips away another layer of Bob's defenses, revealing a man who is terrified. He's terrified of failure. He's terrified of success. But perhaps most of all, he's terrified of being seen for who he really is. One of the most heartbreaking aspects of the book is how it shows that sometimes even success won't save you. Bob's wealth doesn't erase his guilt over Clara or the missions he didn't take. Paul masterfully illustrates that Regret is a shapeshifter. It follows us no matter how far we run or how high we climb. There's also something both deeply unsettling and somehow comforting in Pohl's portrayal of randomness. Life is a series of coin flips, and there's no cosmic force ensuring it will all work out. This might sound sort of bleak, but Pohl doesn't frame it that way at all. Instead, he invites us to embrace the chaos, to accept that not everything will make sense, and that's okay. In the end, Bob's story is about learning to live with ambiguity, both in the universe and within himself. Reading Gateway is a wholly unique experience. You crack it open expecting one thing, adventure, excitement, maybe a little danger, and you emerge somewhere entirely unexpected specifically the messy, complicated terrain of the human heart. Pohl uses the tropes of science fiction to explore themes that are timeless, fear, desire, regret, hope. And he does it all with a narrative voice that is funny and heartbreaking and achingly honest. All this is what makes Gateway not just a great sci-fi novel, but a great novel, period. It's a book that challenges us to confront our deepest fears, not of aliens or space or the unknown, but of ourselves. It forces us to ask, what risks are we willing to take? What regrets are we willing to live with? And perhaps most upsettingly of all, what if we get everything we ever wanted and it's not enough? In my tier ranking of the books I've read in 2024, I place Gateway right here, just behind Roadside Picnic and just ahead of Chasm City. 
It's a book that won award after award after award, and deservedly so. It has left me thinking about it regularly ever since I finished it, and I will undoubtedly read it again in the not-too-distant future. Now, there is a sequel, which I picked up at Chamblin the other day, called Beyond the Blue Event Horizon. And there's a third book as well, which I also picked up at Chamblin, called Hichi Rendezvous. Hichi Rendezvous. There are apparently two more books after this one, too. And I'll probably get to them all eventually, but I'm not exactly scrambling to devour this whole series at the moment. The first book has such a phenomenal conclusion that I was actually incredibly surprised to learn there was a sequel at all. Still, curiosity has a way of tugging at me, and I can't help but wonder what else Pole has hidden in the folds of the fabric of this universe he's created. So, we'll see. If you have read Gateway, I would absolutely love to discuss it with you down below. Otherwise, I will catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching.